And I'm, I'm not advocating we get rid of these devices. What I am advocating is please wake up and see where the threat really is. It is in your hands, it is in your pocket, it is sitting on your table with the screen turned on right now which someone could be looking at, trivially looking at. It takes nothing to do so. The software built into these devices did not anticipate that ultimately we would all have one. 64 gigabytes of memory. Decentralized one. Five times as much as a middle road Dell desktop computer. The processor runs twice as fast. And an infinite number of apps can run on this. This is what has happened. Our computers are no longer back home in the office. They are in our hands. All of our hands collectively. And if someone were smart enough to write software that, let's say, 100 million people downloaded, like any average game app, I do that. If you go on Google and look at the stats and, and you'll see, 100 million people, and that piece of software was collecting information and sending it to a large mainframe in Moscow, then who needs to get into your corporate data center? I don't. They don't. They have all the information in their hands. Now, you say that's an almost impossible task. It is not. It is a data collection and processing task. And I promise you now that, that people have thought of this years ago, and that as we speak, pro these, these applications are being propagated, and they are on our phones, and we have no privacy. Run Decentral One. Go on to future10central.com. It's a free program, and it's really free. I mean, my dad wants to tell me nothing in life is free, but actually, this is. It's a wake-up call. Run it and see what you've done to yourself. It will tell you every permission that every app has asked that you didn't bother to look at before. And you will wake up. Now, what to do? Well, I wish I had an answer. Uh, Future10Central.com, again, my new company, has an entire host of products that can help you. But they can't solve the problem without your help. You have to first become aware that really, this is a problem. This is a problem. It is trivial to make someone believe they're being called by their home office. It is trivial to take a picture of someone and have your software send that picture to yourself. It is trivial to listen to everything that you say throughout the day. And even when you turn your telephone off, if you do not remove the battery, it is trivial to make this phone appear to be turned off. Screen goes blank. How do you know? There's no hardware switch. This is all software. I'm pressing a screen. So it'll turn off. It'll make the noise. You'll think, good. Phone's dead. No, it's not. In many cases, it's not. It is still listening. It is still watching. It is still reading your SMS messages as they occur. It's just not dinging or making noises. This is the reality. This is not a science fiction story. It's not some um, uh, paranoid dream of mine. This is the actual truth of the world in which we live now. And if we don't wake up soon and do something through education, you know, if, if, I, if I were to, to show everybody in the world these just two simple demos, they go, wow, how'd you do that? Any 12-year-old could do it. I know the Russians can do it, the Chinese. I know the bad people can do it, the people who want to empty your bank accounts. We are told by the corporations in power and our government that if we have nothing to hide, then why should we care? Now, I'd like to ask a simple question. Is there anyone in this room who would willingly take out their wallet, hand it to a stranger in this room, and let the stranger go through it and write down everything? Your social security card numbers, your, your everything. Maybe some notes from your girlfriends or your, your, your loved ones. Is there anyone who would do that? I want to see a hand. Yet we willingly download an app and give it permission to do that and more. Because whatever's in our wallet eventually goes through this phone. If you ordered something on Amazon, all of your credit card information, your address, your name. Sometimes you need a social security number. That goes down. You log into your bank. They now have your bank account number. This is the reality of our world. We would not willingly give our wallet to a stranger, but we would willingly, for free, download a game, a mindless game, that entertains us for hours. 
I'm not trying to scare you. I'm trying to wake you up to the reality of the new world of data, privacy, and security. And privacy more than anything else. Because without privacy, what do we have? Privacy is a choice. It's something that we all deserve. When we first meet someone, you, you might just uh, have dinner and say, I, you know, I work at so-and-so, da 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 After a few years, you've divulged a lot more. After a lifetime of friendship, you'll tell them things you would never tell anyone. You get to choose that. No one has the right to invade your privacy to the point that 24 hours a day, you're watched and listened to. That every one of our communications are read, opened, repackaged, and sent on. Yet this is where we're living. So something has to be done. Go on to future10central.com. We have a variety of products, and not just, not just data products. We have the world's first fetal heart monitor. That means, let's say, a home monitor for the expectant mother. You know, the expectant mother, especially a first-time mother, might wake up, oh my god, the baby's not kicking. You take her to the doctor, the hospital, you sit for two hours, the doctor puts a monitor on, no, fine. For $139, take our fetal heart monitor, it's, a, it's an application that runs on your smartphone and a device that you press against your belly, and it will give you the heartbeat, the graph, and tell you whether it's okay or not. You can then take that and put it on Facebook or mail it to your parents or whatever you want. Why? It is taking power back. Taking power back from this corporate structure, and, and I know you're all working for corporations and they pay your salaries. Nevertheless, you're still individuals. You have families, loved ones children, wives and husbands. It is your job to protect them. It is not the government's job. It's not Google's job. It is not the job of Facebook. It is your job. There is no magic button if a burglar bursts into your room and puts a gun to your head that you can push and the police instantly materialize between you and the burglar. No. This is a dream, we, a fantasy we have. It doesn't happen that way. It takes a quarter of a second to pull the trigger. The structure of protection comes in afterwards as, oh, well, let's, let's find, find out who did this and arrest them. No. Security and privacy is your responsibility. No one else's. And, and we are unwilling to accept that because the corporate world has provided us with so much ease. We become lazy. And I fear we will have to wait until some catastrophic event occurs to wake us all up in a big way. And I fear for that time, and I, I fear that it's coming soon. And I'm out of time. Thank you very much.